sometimes they speak verbally to them and uh, that is what we call a harm, a revelation of this form. <coughs> and sometimes they strengthen the hearts without any vision, any dream, any spoken word, but somehow the person who is suffering, he receives that strength from within and he is more reassured than perhaps any words could put him to, into. Uh, I mean, as if they, if they find, such people find themselves in a more state of, better state of reassurance than just uh, ordinary words of consolation and things could do. So these are the angels who are particularly assigned the task of running this phenomena, organizing this phenomena, and sometimes cert certain people are particularly assigned with certain angels and their realities, they are not just uh, psychological um, exp impressions, they in reality exist and their powers are created by Allah to perform the duties which are assigned to them. So when they say, don't fear, they see to it that all the factors which are caused creating fear are ultimately defeated and removed. And when they say, do not be sorry for what you have lost, then they also see to it that their losses are somehow compensated. So that is just not a vain talk. Because they are powerful uh, beings which have uh, a say in the matter of the universe, they see to it that things are moving in that direction. So this is uh, the meaning of descent that these forces come into operation according to the will of Allah. Now I think ultimately we must give you time, Mr. Mishiriya, please, because I feel you are getting restive and more and more restive. I think you came well prepared for tonight. Yeah. Like I see a large, you know, what you call pile of papers. Ah, is it the different different pocket? <laughs> <laughs> you have you have both the pockets filled today. Uh, uh, Azur, I wanted to to ask Azur's yes. permission if I can uh, read two passages from this book, and Which then book? I will try to translate. Ah, yes, I can see that. Yes. You have filled both your pockets with questions and things. Yes. So, now, and what what is the book? This is a, a Nizam-e Baitul Maal, published by Nizam-e Baitul Maal, Sadr Ibn Amdiyan. Um, this, this is not the place for discussing Maal, Baitul Maal. The, these things uh, are uh, generally spoken of in Mayus Shura. So when Mayus Shura, Shura, Shura um, is held, you will be given time to speak on this subject. Azur, what uh, uh, made me uh, bring this thing uh, in light over here, mm -hmm. in the same Majlis Irfan, uh, some of our members expressed that uh, one tenth was faced by Hazrat Masih Mahud al-Islam. And uh, I have brought two passages to say that uh, Hazrat Masih Mahud al-Islam uh, said this and uh, later Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih II said this. You know you have forgotten this completely. He never said that one tenth was not fixed by the written Muslim Muhammad What he said was one sixteenth. Uh, one sixteenth he said uh, was ah, one sixteenth has not been. No, no. What he said was he wanted to ask about the Chanda arm yes, when this proportion was set and who set it. Yes, and uh, I told him that it was not the written Muslim Muhammad yes, Hazrat Masih Mawala Salatu Wasalam under the guidance of Allah only um, fixed the ratio of, of uh, Vasiyat, that is called his Samad, yes, not Chandayam. That was done later on by Shish, and on the advice of Mawala Shura by Hazrat Muslim Mawala. Yes. Is that what you wanted to yes, tell? Uh, so so that, al to, uh, that already is known by everybody, Jirat Yes, please. So, I would like to ask is 
Why is it in, in this country? Are you Chef Yeshu Sahib's son? Yes. Yes. I'd like to ask, why is it in this country that uh, the youngsters are expected to learn or do, even though, you know, we never really been to Pakistan? You can go to the microphone, please. Even though we've never really been to Pakistan. Pardon? Why is it that the youngsters in this country who are brought up to be expected to learn or do? To learn or do? Your parents? Well, yeah, they expect learning. And you don't like it? No, it's not. I don't like it. It's just it's that I feel there, why? Is, uh -huh. there is a pressure, a social this pressure. Yes, I know. Yes. <coughs> the reason is that you do not belong here in as far as your race is concerned. Racially, you are a different entity. And uh, you have been given the status of a Britisher just out of courtesy of these people. Uh, just, just a minute. Yes. So, your social system is different. Your religious concepts are different. And the whole way of life is different. So, just by giving you the social state, the status, national status of this country, the rest of the things won't change automatically. Now, if that is true, when this is true, then you, if you do not safeguard your own social values, your own social system and the way of life, then what would happen would be that you would ultimately land into a situation which is called split personality. You would be neither the British, because ultimately, whatever you may do, they will not accept you as one of them. Because their color, your color, your style, everything would be telltale. And however kind they may be, still the difference would, not, would remain there, there would be a barrier. And if you are not truly Pakistani, and halfway, in neither here nor there, then the Pakistanis would also not accept you as one of them. One of them. And uh, if you are a Muslim, the same thing would be applied there. Being a Muslim, you will, know, you will not know the social values of Islam and things. Now, people most often do not know that the language plays a very important role in safeguarding one's social values and religious values as well. If you know English only here, live while living in here, then you simply cannot fully understand and absorb the oriental values which uh, are your background in reality. There will be a complete uh, insulation between you and your social systems. So I have observed those intelligent people, whether they are living in America or other western countries, who teach their children Urdu or Pashto or Punjabi, Urdu is not a must. Whatever language is spoken in their houses, if they teach that language to their children, there are very few social problems for those children when they grow up. If they do not teach them in the childhood and try to impose that language later on, already the damage has been done and they find them in a situation where they don't want to compromise with their older values. And uh, such questions as is, as, uh, is asked by you, they are asked by everybody else as well. So, the thing is that you can't appreciate, you might have the language, but I really won't really know my culture in Pakistan or anything because I don't know its history, I don't know its identity. See, all I know is that I belong to Islam. Now, that is, that, that is, that is yes, for, that is exactly what I'm pointing out. That's enough for cultural background, but it isn't enough. No, no, that is exactly what I'm pointing out. The main reason why is that you don't know Urdu much, as you should have known. Yeah. While you were a child, your parents said, should have looked to this problem then. Yeah. Already they are too late. But see, the thing is, I, I may be too late to learn Urdu, but I, do not, I, I speak sort of like in between at home, where I speak a bit of Urdu and a bit of English mixed in, because I don't know some of the words and everything. Thing. No, no harm if you speak mixed things, mixed yeah. languages, there is no harm. The language is not the master of people. Yes, but language no. is a servant to the people. And uh, if you are learning some language for its noble purpose, 
in the process of learning you may find your